Okay, welcome. Today we'll be using AppCAD to uh, characterize a uh, printed circuit board based transmission line. Um, when we have the transmission line configured in the manner illustrated in this model cross section, we call it microstrip. Microstrip means that we have a solid ground plane underneath and a transmission line formed by typically copper trace on top. The two are separated, the two copper sections are separated by a uh, substrate material. The importance of this exercise is to illustrate that various pieces of the geometry dictate to the characteristic impedance of the transmission line and as you may know it's very important to uh, have a transmission line that matches the impedance of the source and the load. So if you will, you can extend your thoughts on this model by visualizing the insertion of extra microwave components on the upper part of this uh, substrate so that we can have transmission line and even uh, antenna elements printed on to the same uh, surface area. Uh, microstrip uh, is a little bit better for this than uh, a, a similar a method that implements what's called coplanar technology. So coplanar is a little bit uh, older. Microstrip is um, much more suited to placing components on top with the uh, transmission line. So we're going to start by uh, adjusting some of the geometries. Now when you look at the uh, window uh, that indicates the uh, selection of the substrate material uh, and determining the relative dielectric constant right here, um, you open the free space window up, that's the first uh, dielectric material of course, free space, um, and we're going to select today a material called FR4, also known as epoxy glass, and you'll notice that it has a di relative dielectric constant, not effective, as is stated over here, but a relative dielectric constant of 4.6. Today we're going to be working at 4 gigahertz, and we'll make that change, make it 4 gigahertz. Also, the units, uh, we're going to change from mils to millimeters. I like working metric when it comes to RF, uh, perhaps because of my uh, uh, days working with uh, antennas, designing antennas. So we've set our units to millimeters, and of course we're going to have to change these uh, values that we see here for width, height, thickness, and length. So in terms of determining the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, the length is not a factor. However, width and height of substrate are major factors, and to some degree the thickness of the copper, uh, but much at a much smaller uh, sense. So the length we're going to leave the same, but the height, uh, because most of the FR4 that's used out there is 62 thou, or also that converts to 1.57 millimeters, we'll enter in 1.57. The thickness, now we're now in millimeters, so there's very, very little, quite often, uh, Copper thickness is really uh, quoted by manufacturers as weight, so many ounces per copper. But we'll put a dimension onto it and we'll make it 0 0.01. The length we'll leave alone. So right now we have some components set. So this is fixed uh, in terms of the height. The dielectric constant is now fixed. The thickness of the copper is fixed. We're going to do a number of iterations of the width in order to navigate to a characteristic impedance, in this case, of 50 ohms. So let's hit the calculate button, see what impedance we get, and then I'll try to explain some of the other values that arise. So we hit calculate. We find that with the current geometry, in other words, 12 meter, millimeters width of transmission line, we're at 18.30 ohms, which is uh, quite a distance away from the 50 ohms. Nevertheless, we find that APCAD, a great little package, APCAD also reports the electrical length in terms of wavelengths on the line. So in other words, 4 gigahertz will convert to a wavelength, C over F, etc., times uh, the uh, inverse of the root of the dielectric constant. And the electrical length is also quoted in degrees based on the 1,000 millimeters here. Uh, it tells us specifically what one wavelength is. So if you look at the wavelength, of 36.972 uh, millimeters and the physical length divide one into the other you should see a correlation to some of these answers. VP stands for typically uh, propagation velocity 
but it's also uh, qualified by the extra terminal energy fraction of C, so we call that typically velocity factor. Um, we also have the effective value of the dielectric constant. And note that we put in originally the relative dielectric constant of 4.6, but it also calculates the effective dielectric constant in a non-homogeneous environment. Non-homogeneous means it's not in free space on either side. The geometries above and below are slightly different, so it changes that value of uh, dielectric constant. It also gives us the width to height ratio and the width being the uh, width of the transmission line and h being the height of the uh, substrate. So what do we do now? Well, as indicated, we're going to make changes to the width and see if we can't navigate through uh, several iterations to a optimum value or as close as we can to 50 ohms. So uh, we were at 12. Let's go to 10 and see what we get. 10 millimeters. We calculate. Well, we see we're headed in the right direction, but we're still quite a ways away. Let's make another change. Let's go down to 5. Let's be daring. We'll go further. Ah, we're getting closer, but still not there. And let's go to, say, 2. Well, 2 is maybe uh, too aggressive. Uh, we've gone over our 50 ohms, so let's back up a bit. Let's compromise. We'll go to 3. And we see we're very, very close. And after this, if you feel you need to, it's just a matter of doing a little bit of tweaking. 2.8 millimeters. Two 2.9. Brings us pretty close. 2.9 millimeters brings us very close to a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms. So now that you know what your dimensions are, you can go to a CAD package of uh, some sort of drawing package and enter the correct geometries for your uh, transmission line. Thank you very much.